What's up everyone? It's your girl Stephanie and today I am showing all my handbag collection. I have gathered them all. I actually cleaned them all as in using like a, a damp towel with a little bit of soap. I had never really cleaned any of my vintage bags like that. I know that might sound gross, but most of them are my mom's. Actually, I think all of them are my mom's. And I had never used any kind of leather conditioner, leather balm on them. They look so much better. I feel like I have a pretty good range of bags in terms of like price points. I wanted to start off with the three bags that I use the most in terms of like daily wear. This isn't necessarily going out in the evening. I do use them, but this is like in the daytime when I just wanna grab a bag and go. The first one is this one right here. It is Simon Miller this little pebbled green leather. I don't know why I do this, but I always add little trinkets to all my bags or a lot of my bags. I was going through everything. I was like, wow, I really do do this a lot. <laughs> the reason why I really like this shape is I love the structure. So it's like a very casual bag, but it can stand up. That's a big thing for me actually, stand up on its own. It has a much wider base than a lot of bags this shape. Um, let me show you. You get a sneak peek of this one. So you see like that and that. I also am a zipper person. I really just like to be able to seal my bag. So good zipper. You can also snap it and it kind of turns into like a funky evening bag shape maybe. I'm not sure. I really, I never do this. This bag has a lot of the attributes that I look for in a bag. So you'll see it kind of reoccurring through different ones here. I'm just able to put it on my shoulder, tuck it under my arm, and go. The second bag that I use very regularly is this one by Coach. I actually got this 50% off. And Coach bags, and they're not like crazy expensive. They're not like Gucci, Prada, those kind of prices. So I got a really good deal on this. It's a nice structured leather. I was just looking for something in this color. A lot of my bags are, all my bags are darker. I just wanted something to go with, you know, like a light, you know, like this kind of outfit. The only thing I have a qualm with, unless there's a lot of stuff or it's kind of heavy, it does not want to sit up on its own. So you have to hang it somewhere. Speaking about sales, I also got this bag on sale. I believe it was 30% off. I know the Memorial Day sales are coming up, so I always wait for a sale uh, before I make any larger purchases. The last bag that I grab very frequently, and this is one I've had for the longest amount of time, is this Bape Porter Collaboration crossbody bag. Again, I've added some accessories on there. Pretty much wear it on the body like that. It's a very squishy bag. I know it's made out of nylon. This bag has just been everywhere with me. Um, I take it traveling and also day to day music festivals, if I'm taking Josie to the park, so you get the picture. It is really sturdy. I love how it has a lot of different little pockets. And again, it's like a bit squishy. Porter is a company that makes the actual bag, but you can probably find something really similar to this from Porter. This also has really cool little secret pockets. Two of them, I actually found stuff in it when I was, when I was cleaning this out that had definitely been forgotten in there for years. I'm not sure how I overlooked that for so long. And then I attached this little brain dead um, hand sanitizer to the outside. So yeah, love this bag. By the way, I Google image searched a bunch of the vintage ones or all the vintage ones and found some really cool results. I'm gonna finish Coach and then we're gonna go into Prada. We have this cream colored Coach bag, which I have never used. I got this bag maybe a week before getting the other cream colored bag. I saw this online, I thought it was so cute, and I thought, okay, that could be a good daily bag, maybe. But then once I got it, I realized it was not a practical daily bag. To be honest, I, I abused the other one quite a lot. I'm just like throwing it on chairs and stuff. But this is a bag you definitely cannot do that to. I, I feel like you would immediately scratch the surface. And also, I feel like opening and closing this flap too much, you, you're gonna start getting a lot of really noticeable cracks, you know? It was final sale when I bought it, so I've actually been meaning to just sell it. I have another bag that I am going to sell as well. It is a really cute bag, just not practical for me. We have three Prada bags. So let's start off with 
these two. I'll start off with the red one. This is my first Prada purchase. It is one of the re-edition nylon bags. I love this thing so much. Just like the green Simon Miller, you don't have to worry about it too much. I've actually gotten marks on this and they come out easily. A lot of these re-edition bags, this one's the 2005, the strap is also nylon, which makes the bag a bit floppy. And this one has a leather strap. It gives it a lot more structure. I've actually seen my bag next to another person's who had the nylon strap and theirs kept like falling over and mine was standing up. If you're a person who wears a lot of neutrals like me, I will wear, you know, a white tank top and jeans or I wear all black a lot. This is just a great pop of color and I have gotten so much use out of this. And now we have this yellow one here. Depending on the lighting, it looks yellow and then kind of green yellow. I wasn't planning on getting another one of these bags or, or this shape because, you know, I have this one already, but I think, I think it was my sister's birthday. That's the only time I would go like into these kind of stores and I saw this and I was in a shopping kind of mood, you know, and I kind of just like went for it. It was a treat yourself day. So this bag is cool because it actually has two straps. I love this because Obviously, it's a really unique little chain strap here. And then we also have this seatbelt material kind of strap, which has a little cute pouch. I really rarely use this one. It just seems like a bit much together. I wish I could have just bought it like this because this thing I think made it quite a bit more expensive. The red, I think, hide scuffs and whatnot pretty well in itself but yeah every single little mark you can see but i have cleaned it there has never been a scuff or anything that stayed i also added this little like daisy chain pendant that went with it really well i like how the yellow and the red pops on it so i added that to the end of this bag <laughs> Final Prada is this guy. Oh my gosh, I love this bag so much. It's a really nice size. There are a few different versions of this. I know that there's one that is like a red strap. This one was a little bit more difficult to come by because I initially saw this like after it had been released, I think even by like a couple years. And I ended up buying it used. It's in fantastic condition. I honestly, I think I paid pretty close to what it was originally priced at, but I had been wanting this bag at that point for like a year and a half. So it kind of just all came together. It is just an ode to, you know, MySpace days. I had a few of these belts and it's cool with like skirts, dresses and more casual outfits as well. The other thing that's cool about it is, well, one, I don't have a lot of bags that are like actual crossbody, like long kind of straps, but you can adjust this like this. So it does become a little shoulder bag. Again, I'll put the names of all the bags in the description. If I can find this bag online, like I'll link that out too. I have three bags here to show y'all. This is the section of like kind of more random bags. This one is a Rebecca Minkoff. I actually got to pick this out for a campaign, a Nordstrom Rack campaign. To be honest, like I don't think I would necessarily have picked this out for myself if I had you know, the selection of all bags, but I'm glad that I got it because it, it is a bag that has a lot of nice space in there. It has this right here, right? Which kind of gives you the false sense of like, you have to undo this to open it up but actually it's just a little snap here and there's also an inner snap to open up the bag and yes very large inside the one thing that really irks me about this bag is just this there's so much structure right here and then like nothing so then it kind of just flops like that. I guess it would be really, really big <laughs> if it were to stand up like this all the time, but it's a little bit frustrating when you're trying to like grab things out of it and this, this guy's just kind of flopping around. But other than that, I actually have gotten 
some good use out of this. This bag here, I actually need to bring out because I had it in its dust bag to like protect it obviously. But then when something's in its dust bag, like I don't see it, so I'm not using it. Um, this is a collaboration, Samara and Claire. It is a vegan leather bag. Claire really generously gifted this to me. It has a little snap here and open. The thing that I like about this compared to the Coach is obviously, I mean, they're different materials and everything, but when you open it up, it feels like it's meant to be opened. And I don't feel like there's gonna be a lot of creasing here. I also like that it has a zipper to keep your things really secure inside. Multiple pockets in there, and it's a nice velvet lining. This actually has a long strap, which I left in the dust bag for some reason, um, but I did put the shorter one on there. And this is definitely my, my size, so. I know this is very late, but thank you, Claire. <laughs> thank you so much for gifting this to me. Last bag we have on my left side is this one from El Cholo's Kid. This is hand woven by Mexican artisans and the owner of this company, she donates to different organizations. I have a couple larger totes from her, but they're like big guys to maybe bring on a picnic. I'm not sure if that should be included in this video. These are like more handbags though, and that is like a big tote bag. In any case, she also has these cute little guys here. These have snaps up top and comes with <laughs> this strap here. I love the color combination of this green and the purple. If you're looking for a little bag like this, or like I said, like a big tote, you should definitely check her out. Actually, speaking about designers who donate to great causes, I have two bags from Brandon Blackwood. Um, he came out with these during the pandemic. He raised a lot of money for charitable organizations. The front says, end systemic racism on both of them. This is the one I purchased first. It is, a, obviously the color is so nice and a really durable canvas. It has a little snap closure with a long strap as well. This one here, I believe is like a faux leather with a denim look. Also comes with its own little strap. I got this one where he was having a big sale, like a blowout sale. If you would like to support a black owned business, we got Brandon Blackwood right here, really high quality, beautiful bags. I was gonna talk about Gucci last, but I think I'm gonna talk about it now because we also have Dior after that and a few other brands, but Gucci's what I have the most of. That's actually because three of them are vintage from my mom. So let's first talk about the newer ones. We have this crossbody Gucci right here. This is actually a men's bag. This is the other bag that I'm actually planning on selling because I'm just not really getting that much use out of it. I really did get a lot of use out of it and I think I took really good care of it. Hopefully it will resell well. I always look in the men's sections of stores in general, but there's something about the hardware in the men's section that you don't get in the women's. Like, look at this thick zipper. It's so satisfying. A nice leather, great hardware. We got the G's, the Gucci. I also like that about menswear stuff. It has more like subtle design. And men's bags and accessories tend to cost so much less than women's. It's nuts. Yeah, let's see how much I I get for this guy. You know what? This is also from the menswear section. I looked this bag up and it's actually supposed to be a toiletries bag or a makeup bag and I feel like that's really um, unrealistic for this bag because first of all, we got a pebbled leather exterior. We have this ribbon that goes on the bottom and to the back and the interior is like a, a brown gray suede. So <laughs> just imagine just an, a concealer exploding in here. I have personally used it as a clutch. Also imagine this sitting on your countertop with like this, uh, no. I did have a couple oil stains somehow, I don't know, on the back, on the, <laughs> the cream colored side. Again, soap and water, it came out. What sucks is, I don't know if you can see it. There are a few scratches on it. And I think that was my bad from when I was packing things 
um, to move. I wasn't as careful when packing bags, so I think that's how that happened, which really sucks. But yeah, I saw this at the Gucci store a few years back. I love the design. I haven't gotten the most use out of this because it is like a clutch style. I'm trying to figure out if I can somehow make it into a bag. That would be really cool. But I just generally love the look of it and you know, that's why I got it. Last newer design Gucci is this one right here, but I did buy this used on Poshmark. I was looking for the specific bag and a girl had it listed on Poshmark for like a really good price. I remember I was like shocked. I think that she was just trying to get rid of it fast or something. I bought it like minutes after she had listed it. I at the time was looking for a larger bag like this with structure for traveling and a crossbody. So it has this really beautiful classic Gucci strap and it looks really nice across the body. There's a good amount of space in there for you know a vlogging camera, all your travel stuff. I love the structure and the zip. The only thing honestly that I don't really like, I don't like this necessarily. It's not my fave. So when I wear it, I actually wear it this side showing. I have been considering selling this one as well. I did get so much use out of this when I was traveling. So I, I think I might just hold on to it and circle back to it because it really is just such a beautiful, useful bag. Last item before getting to the vintage Gucci I got from my mom is this right here, <laughs> which is a little cigarette case, I guess. Oh, hello. She just came to say hi. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you. Okay, you wanna stay there? Josie just leaning her entire body on top of the most expensive bag here. <laughs> This is a little Gucci cigarette case that I got at a thrift store for, I think it was 25 bucks. If it wasn't, it was 25 or 30. And that's because it was in terrible shape. All the metal component, it was like super rusty and it's still very scratched. And I didn't get, every, I couldn't get every single thing out, but I got a lot out. It did not look like this in my recent washing of everything. I'm not sure if I like only cleaned the metal part and not the body of it before, but I had no idea that it would turn out to look this good. I was not expecting uh, after it dried to be this color and have this kind of structure after I stuffed it with tissues. This was during uh, Tom Ford's era. I just looked it up and one on Grailed that has wear on it, kind of similar to this, I guess, is on there for $190. So I think I've had this now for eight years and I, I, I guess I never washed it the way I did yesterday. Just a cool little accessory. We'll see what kind of use I get out of it. Now we are coming to my mom's bags. We'll start off with this one right here, which my mom gave to me when I think I was just going to college. She let me have it or, you know, start using it. The condition definitely wasn't the best when I got it. When my mom gave it to me, I was 16. So I was a little bit rambunctious with it. A very classic shape, honestly, really beautiful. The interior though, when I got it was already falling apart and I realized the lining is completely detached. So I ended up, yeah, just yesterday taking the whole lining out and now I kind of, I can kind of like use this bag again, like without that lining. Also really interesting, I think I have video of this, but the structural part of this has little Gucci emblems on it too. This was my first designer bag ever and I still really love it. Would it be terrible if I poked another hole in the strap to make it like a shoulder bag? It's so beat up anyways, it's not like it has 
uh, crazy resale value. I did see some like this online and even the ones that are very pristine, you know, it's not too much. So let me know if you think I should do that because that would make it really wearable for me currently. This one, it kind of is like a mini satchel. I was able to find out when this bag was made and it was 1973. The body in itself is in very good condition. The straps are another story though because a lot of the stitching has gone so the straps are kind of falling apart a bit. Some of the leather like in the corners have really worn but that's to be expected. Other than that, this bag is really beautiful. We have a lot of space in here. I've actually never worn this bag because it was not great condition, but also, you know, not necessarily my style, but who knows, things evolve. Okay, so we have our last vintage Gucci bag and I love this bag so much. And I found something really cool yesterday when I Google searched it, image searched it. So this is a little clutch. It's in um, a dark, navy blue. You're, you're hearing a lot of clinking. I'll, I'll show that to you in a second, but it's Velcro. And it opens up to this like brilliant blue on the inside. What's interesting is it says Gucci Parfum. So it's like perfume. Was this a bag that came <laughs> like in a set with a Gucci perfume? Because that would be nuts. You may see these holes here. I don't think that that is original to the bag. I think actually my aunt added those and maybe she DIY'd some sort of strap, but now it's gone. I love the Velcro. <laughs> There's something about the, the the Velcro. <laughs> when I image searched it, there is a bag that is very similar that is on sale now. It is called the Ophidia GG Small Shoulder Bag, Beige and Blue Supreme. Pretty expensy. I love this bag though. I love the hardware. This bag is so cool. How cool is it that they have like the modern version on the site for sale? I don't know when they came out with it. If it was very recently, like what a weird coincidence, right? In any case, clearly this bag is timeless. This is a purchase that I made through Instagram because I kept getting ads. This is from JW Pay. It's vegan leather, really, really cute. It's very sturdy though. You can get into it, but you have to, a little bit of force. Again, the texture is nice. It's nice and squishy. It has that cool like curved bottom and they have tons of colors. This one is called grass green because there's a few greens. I actually got this to try and replace the Simon Miller one because <laughs> I got this one first and it was significantly less expensive than this one. This I had my eye on for like a year, year and a half. I ended up getting this last year for 30% off. I got this one to try and satiate the crave for this one. <laughs> it didn't do it obviously, but it is a great bag in its own right. I've gotten a lot of use out of this one as well. Okay, I'm gonna talk about kind of like one-offs before we go into the most expensive bags that I have in this entire collection. Here we have this beaded bag from Stodd. Look at this thing. I mean, it is just so beautifully beaded. I feel like if you're someone who beads or makes jewelry at all, you will have a true appreciation for like, holy cow, how much work goes into this. Nice big strap beaded as well. It does have a flap to it and some nice roomy space in there. I was wearing this one a ton last year. I'm cutting in here because who cares about what I'm saying here? <laughs> Look at this bag. Look at this fruit salad bag. It's so cute. And they have so many other colorways that I had no idea they had. <sighs> this video has not been healthy 
for my ADHD brain and (laughs) the dopamine rush that it gets from shopping. A bit of an overshare, but okay, back to the video. This is just a really beautiful bag to me. It's like a little piece of art. This is a bag that I kind of forgot to look up beforehand, but here is a tiny little, just a little guy from Off-White. It was listed as a men's bag. I got this at a secondhand shop in Japan. It was brand new. It's a pebbled leather, really nice. It's a strappy guy. There's a magnet inside. We have the classic little design here. I really like this part of the design where the zipper here, you know, has this little loop and you can see it when it's closed. I think that's, I don't know, very thoughtful. Let me look this up right now. Let's see if I can Google image it. Okay, that's not right. This is back is $599 on StockX. This says last sale, $599. The price history, it has just kept going up. Okay, I think the original price is $384 because that's what I'm seeing from Neiman Marcus. It's obviously, it says out of stock, but that's the pricing on Neiman Marcus and Bergdorf. But on the Real Real and Rebag, we have pretty different prices, but on the real real, we have one for $446. And then on Rebag, this one sold for $645. If memory serves me, I got this used in Japan around 120. I never really thought about it, but is it because um, Virgil passed away? So. It's more of a collector's item now. Two more bags before we get to Dior. This is a bag by Kosa Numbers. I've had this bag for a really long time. Since like I first moved to LA, it is a hefty leather. When I cleaned it and used, oh, by the way, this is what I used on the bags. (laughs) I looked it up. This is a Dr. Martin's Wonder Balsam. It's a special blend of natural waxes. A bunch of places said that this is totally great for bags. So I tested it on one and it seemed good. And yeah, it really worked on this guy right here. I think it just soaked it up. This was during the time of guys wearing like drop crotch, legging type pants, very flowy stuff (laughs) with like a leather harness on top. Do you know what I'm talking about? And also all the different colored hair. That was this era, but I think it's still a cool bag. I have not worn it in a long time, but it's one that I definitely want to hold on to because I use this bag a lot and I'm surprised there aren't any huge scratches on it. So it held up really well. It actually has a long strap, which is this right here. And it's like a rubber material and it went through these holes but I really like just using the rings. So I took this off and then I just used it like that. It's like a bag that's also a piece of jewelry. It is really cool. And I don't have anything else quite like this one. This more like adventure bag here from, I don't, I've never said this one out loud either. Dagne Dover, Dagne, Dagne. This is just a great, grab bag as well. It is a single strap guy, so it's nice like cross body action. I've worn this on a couple hikes. It fits like a water bottle really nicely, all your stuff. We got pockets on pockets, okay? Also like a couple carabiners. (laughs) It's always nice to have a couple carabiners handy when you're out exploring, you never know. We got so many different compartments, okay? like a nice deep one for your phone to go in. So it's very, very secure. And we even have this little guy for quick access to your keys. Do you see these two zippers? This is the front zone. So we have two zippers here for like two hidden compartments right there. 
So I guess, yeah, this is actually a great travel bag too because there's so many secret compartments. My sister recently got, um, it's supposed to be like a diaper bag, but she, I think she just uses it as like a computer bag. She loves compartments too, and she really, really loves it. If you're looking for more of like a utilitarian grab bag every day, sort of thing. I think this is a great option. Okay, we come down to it. <sighs> I'm gonna do the little guy first. Um, this is a little Dior. It's kind of my only evening bag. Like if I have to go to a wedding or something like fancy, this is the little bag I have. What's really cool about this bag here is that you can kind of carry it like this. <laughs> I know it looks weird, but you can carry it with your hand through it, especially if you're just like trying to grab it and go. It's it's nice to be able to hold it like this. This is so awkward looking, but I really like the versatility of the straps. Each chain, by the way, has CD on it. It's like, just the details are really nice. You can double it up like this, so it's a shoulder bag. Or you could drop one and then it's a crossbody bag. Or you could stick everything on the inside it does take up a bit of room. You can stick everything on the inside if you wanted to. If you actually just want to grab it like this really fast and you don't want the chain in the way, you know, you can do that. It opens up with a little flap here. There's two magnets. And then we have the inside. There is like one little, oh, it's a Hong Kong coin. 10 cents. <laughs> That is so random. I did not necessarily pick this myself or buy this myself at first. I met up with my sister one day and she had this. She had really recently gotten it and I actually was looking for an evening bag like this for a while. I didn't want to just buy something random. I wanted to buy something that I know of you know, get a lot of use out of. My sister had it. I was like drooling over it. I was looking it up online. My sister was just kind of like, you know what? If you really like it that much, you can buy this off of me. I think that she just went and got another one. So that's how I came to have this bag right here. I think why I really like it is because it's, it's that more delicate evening bag size, but then we have like hardcore hardware. Gotten a lot of use out of it. I really love this one. This bag or strap plus bag is the most I've ever spent on like a singular item of clothing, accessories, whatever. And it's this Dior Oblique saddle bag. I think I've loved this bag since I was maybe in like middle school. I remember the first time I saw this bag, I think it was Britney Spears had it. This bag was very popular in that era. It is kind of a timeless piece to me. My sister, <laughs> Jen and I were in Australia years ago. We went to the Dior store and I saw this bag. At the time, it was the best opportunity for me to purchase a bag because we were in Australia and we didn't have to pay tax. So in the end, I actually paid around $1,000 less, I believe, than if I were to purchase it in the US. This plus the extra strap. This is the strap that I got. You attach it to the Ds of the CD on the side, but you can't remove off this strap. Either you can just kind of leave it down like that. So you carry it and it's kind of like a cool extra accessory or you can do it crossbody. I have worn this so much. This has gone to many places with me. It's such a great shape. When you fit it under your shoulder, because of its shape here, like you can really hold on to it very securely. The bottom zone over here, it's kind of divided up into two sections. And I don't know, you just fit a lot of stuff in this bag. It's not a bag that I can stand up. I have to hang it. It is very secure underneath my arm compared to other bags that might just be kind of slipping off all the time. Maybe it's also because of this hardware. I don't realize, yeah, I actually put my thumb through the C a lot. So that makes sense. I've just gotten so much wear out of this bag and I really don't feel like you can tell that much. 
All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video. I feel like my ADHD really came through during this video. I'm curious about a couple things, okay. One, if you've watched like other people's handbag collections, like how does mine compare to other people's? I'm interested. Is it like a crazy amount of bags to you or is it reasonable? And which bag actually? Which bag was your favorite? I don't know if I can choose a favorite. Oh. Okay, if there was a fire, I don't know. In turn Purely for sentimental value, I think it would be this one. I can't separate myself like emotionally from this bag. <laughs> okay, but if if that was not a factor, I think I would I would grab my my saddlebag. But sen sentimentality is a factor, so I would grab this one right here. Okay. <laughs> I love y'all. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.